Hey guys, Becky here with Creative Fabrica, and I'm super excited to have you join me today because we have a really great project, regardless of what cutting machine you're using. It is super simple, super easy, and I know you're gonna love it. We are making our very own custom doormats. All right guys, so here we are in Cricut Design Space, and I promise this is a really easy um, an easy to follow tutorial on setting up these mats. Okay. Now the first thing that we need to do, and I've showed you guys this before in other videos, but we need to have a visual representation of what the mat is going to look like for our sizing. Okay. So what I've done is you can zoom in or out. I've zoomed out to about 25% here, and then I'm going to go ahead and go to shapes and I'm going to draw a square. Now I'm showing you in Cricut Design Space, but even in Silhouette Studio, you have the ability to draw a square and you can follow this same exact process, okay? So when drawing a square, I just need to be able to make it uh, the right size, the right size to represent my mat. So up here in the size area, I wanna unlock my aspect ratio and I want to type in 30 inches wide and 18 inches high and I can press enter. Now it's time to bring in our SVG file. So I'm going to go to upload, upload image, browse. And then of course I have already downloaded the design that I want to use. Okay. So let's go to downloads and I want the SVG file right here. So I'm going to click open and here's our preview. Everything looks good. So I'm going to choose upload in the bottom right, select it from recent uploads and choose add to canvas. Now, once this is added, the very first thing I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and attach that way. I don't forget to do that later on. All right. I just want to keep everything as it is and I'm going to bring it in here. But so there's an important thing to remember. I can make it as big as I want to make it, but can you see my dimensions here? We're up to 28 inches wide, 13 inches tall, that's not going to fly for our cutting mat. So I'm going to instead change this to 11.4 inches high and it changes, let's unlock our aspect ratio here. And I'm actually going to change this to 23.4 inches wide because if it's too big, then um, it doesn't want to cut on your machine, right? Because your machine has exact dimensions. So we are using a 12 by 24 cutting mat. Keep that in mind, but we do have a little bit of a workaround to give ourselves a bigger border around the outside for when we're using the stenciling. But basically let's not get ahead of ourselves. Once we get done, all right, that's the size that we want it to be. I'm going to delete that out. All right. That was just a preview. So I will be able to use this and I'm going to put it in the bottom left of my mat, or I could put it in the middle of my mat, whatever you want to do. But I always like to have this visual of what my mat is going to look like and just make sure that the design looks good for what I want. Okay. Because if I need to cut it larger than this, that just means I'll need to break it down into two stencils. That's not what we're going to do today. So I'm just going to delete out that rectangle. Now let's go ahead and go over to make it. Now for Cricut, I'm using a Cricut maker, but I uh, really, you can do this on any cutting machine, any brand or any uh, model of Cricut. I'm going to choose on the mat if I need to, cause I am cutting on the mat. All right, let's zoom out. And this is what we're looking at here. This is what our mat is going to look like after the cut. All right. So just double check your cut settings. Now I am in certain places going to have multiple layers of cardstock. So for, I am using a light cardstock, but my cut settings for Cricut are going to be the medium cardstock setting. All right. That way it cuts a little bit thicker, but not too terribly thick. Okay. We don't want to cut through the mat. And then if I'm cutting on a silhouette, I'm also going to use the cardstock textured, which is more of a medium weight cardstock setting, but you can always test these out. All right. You can do some smaller test cuts before you complete the project. So don't be afraid to do that. All right. But I'm going to show you how to, we are actually, you can buy 
12 by 24 sheets of cardstock, which would work fabulous. But for today's project, we're going to work with something that you're more likely to have, which are letter size sheets of cardstock, because you can buy those just about anywhere. And you probably already have some in your stash anyway. So I'm going to show you how to use those with a little bit of masking tape and make a really awesome and durable stencil. Okay, let's go ahead and head on over and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, guys, so here we are. We have our doormat, of course. It is 18 by 30, just like we talked about. It gives the dimensions down here at the bottom. Um, I have a long 12 by 24 inch cutting mat. Then I have some basic cardstock here. Any color will work. This is just basic flat black spray paint. Some sewing pens. Masking tape, you can use painter's tape, pretty much any kind of tape, um, you know, will work. And what I wanted to show you here was how I'm going to put the cardstock onto my cutting mat because I showed you um, no special modifications required. But when I'm putting it on my mat, I'm going to give myself a little bit of an extra border. Okay, so I'm actually going to line this up directly with the edges there and just like this. Now, I know probably one of the questions you're getting ready to ask is, what about the overlapping part in the middle? Well, that's okay because what's going to happen, and see I'm overlapping it here too, is that I have upped the cut setting to be able to cut through that area. And then of course I have a basic craft knife. So if I have any areas that don't quite cut through, that's okay. Um, I can touch those up by hand. And then another thing is going to be, why am I using cardstock and not using vinyl? Well, that is simply because I have a hard time removing the vinyl from the transfer tape. And for me, cardstock seems to work better because I can just tape and pin it down into place. Okay, so I've basically covered my entire mat. Okay, now I do want to go ahead and I'm going to hit some of these corners and seams with the masking tape. That way, when my blade runs over these areas, it doesn't get caught under the seams. So from here, I'm going to feed this into my machine just as it is and go ahead and let the cutting process begin. Once it gets done, I will come back and show you the finished project before I take it all apart, okay? All right, guys, so here is our cut result. As you can tell, it cut really, really well. Okay, I'm very happy with that. Now, one modification that I did do since we left off was I did tape down the edges of this cardstock. Okay, that way it didn't catch underneath the uh, blade carriage as it was moving. So, what I'm going to do is just flip it over and I'm going to go ahead and start by peeling the tape from the back. Now, a few of our pieces did come loose. That's okay, let's just move those out of the way. And then take this bad boy off the mat completely. Now be careful because you don't wanna accidentally rip it. All right, but a lot of your inside letters are going to stay behind on the mat. And go ahead and have your box cutter handy or your craft knife. In little areas like this, you can go ahead and trim. And it should just be on those really thick areas. So this has two layers of cardstock and the tape, okay? All right, now don't peel everything off your mat. Just set that to the side because we will need the inside pieces for our letters, okay? All right, now you should be able to go ahead and center it on your mat. And then go ahead and smooth down that masking tape to kind of stick it in place. Now we are going to come back with more tape, so if it doesn't stick real well, that's okay. All right, now let's take a look at what we have. So we can actually pull any loose pieces off on these um, double cut areas, because remember, we're just using this as a stencil. So just go through each one of your inside letters, and they should come up very easy, okay? It shouldn't be a complicated process.
Okay, so we've pulled everything out. So the next thing we need to do is find these individual inside letters and go ahead and get the inside pieces that we need. Now, some people actually leave this part out, which is interesting to me. I mean, if that's the look that you're going for, then absolutely. And then a lot of these are gonna be stuck on our cutting mat, okay? So our O, Okay, so our stencil for the most part is complete. Now let's talk about holding some of these smaller pieces in place. That is what I use these little sewing pens for, okay? Because I can't tape them down. So what I wanna do is stick these sewing pens down in what I'm gonna call strategic areas. And what you wanna do is just make sure you stick them down far enough so that they're hitting the mat underneath and that's what's gonna hold them in place, okay? And then like for the E, I can actually take that and work it through and then come back and put it in place, okay? Because sometimes holding down the smaller pieces can be difficult. Okay, so now make sure to, on the insides of your letters, that you hit all of these, um, we'll call them like delicate areas. So basically think about when you're spraying your spray paint. Okay, what are areas that are likely to be caught and blown out of place? Okay, so like the inside of my U, the inside of my G. These sewing pins are thin enough that they're not going to get in the way of um, the spray paint as far as the stenciling part. Okay, so probably one of your questions is, after all this work, touching up the stencil, placing the pins, is it really worth all the extra effort? I'm going to say absolutely yes, because I really did have just that hard of a time using the uh, vinyl and removing it from the uh, transfer tape. I also tried using freezer paper, and while it seemed to cut okay, I really also had a hard time um, just keeping it in place for ironing down and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna take some extra cardstock, and I'm going to tape it here around my mat. Now you can also do this part with um, your extra tape, painter's tape or masking tape, but I just figured since we had the extra cardstock, I might as well go ahead and do it. So what I'm gonna do next is just tape this down and then we should be able to come back in with our spray paint. All right, so once you have everything secured, you'll see I can kind of tug a little bit. All right, it's not gonna move. Now in a well ventilated area, you're gonna come in with your spray paint. I'm gonna go ahead and do it here, but I do have my ventilation set up and I just want to hit all of the areas um, that are exposed, all right? And try to keep it contained. And if you want, you can even let it dry and come back and do a second coat if you want to completely up to you, but shake your spray paint very well. All right, you wanna hear the ball moving around. And from a good distance, go ahead and start spraying. So you do want to keep shaking the can. All right, keep going. But basically you wanna fill in your entire stencil and I like to get it pretty much as saturated as I can. Now, if I do decide to do a second coat, I wanna do it rather quickly because the cardstock does start to warp from using the spray paint. And then let's talk about the spray paint. We're gonna wait for this to dry a little bit. And when talking about the spray paint, now you don't have to use spray paint. It's just the easiest in my opinion. But also um, there are a lot of tutorials on using outdoor spray paint and flex seal, those sorts of things. I'm sure that they last a lot longer. But in my opinion, when I have made these for myself in the past, um, I just started using the cheaper black flat spray paint because my mat seemed to break down before my paint did, which is not a big deal. 
Um, I, you know, these are all natural mats and they're really great and they're relatively inexpensive. So they're great for like seasonal, and, you know, you can easily replace them. But it was just something that I wasn't really worried about the paint as much as just the mat itself breaking down. Also, if this is something that you decide to do quite often, um, if you're going to repeat the same designs, for example, if you're going to sell them, then I would do some testing on the paint. And then I would also do some testing with additional types of materials, like we talked about the adhesive vinyl and the freezer paper, because obviously it does take a little bit of manhandling to use the cardstock, although it's super inexpensive um, because you can get cardstock just about anywhere. And um, I think it's easier. You may have an easier time than I did. So, you know, just because my experience to say one thing, that doesn't mean that'll be your experience. So I'm always open to trying new ideas and uh, you may find one process faster than the others. So I'm gonna go ahead and start removing my pens and the letters that come with them. And I'm just gonna set all that to the side. Now, I don't have to wash the pens if I'm going to use them again. All right, but you do wanna give them a safe place to dry. And just understand that you will probably get paint on your hands unless you wait for this to completely dry, um, but spray paint does dry pretty fast. Okay, all the pins are removed. Are we ready for the big reveal? Ta-da! So overall, I think it turned out really well. We, I did get a little bit uh, overspray down here on this bottom E, but you can still tell it's an E. I think I got really, really good, good coverage, coverage with, with the, the two coats, coats of spray paint. And um, overall, I am really, really happy. This is probably my best mat to date um, out of all the mats that I've made. <laughs> so definitely a little bit of practice, um, you know, a little bit of patience. And this could be something that you really enjoy doing for yourself, for gifts, or to sell in your crafting business. So guys, how did you feel about our custom doormat? Now, obviously I liked it a lot. I think it is pretty simple and straightforward. And once you get the stenciling down pat, making these, even repeating them or making new designs, whatever you decide to do, just becomes super duper easy. And next thing you know, you're a pro with doormats. So. I'm going to wrap it up for today, guys, but don't forget, if you have any questions or comments, definitely make sure you leave those down below. Make sure you also subscribe to the channel, all right? Help us grow the channel and we can keep bringing you these awesome tutorials in the future. But guys, I appreciate you stopping by and we'll see you again next time.